Last week, the Ghana Water Company announced a nationwide water rationing exercise. The company said the situation has arisen due to high turbidity of the water sources it uses to produce water for consumption mining, ma mainly small-scale majority of which are illegal, is one key source of the problem. It appears we have taken our eyes off the ball, abandoned our fight against illegal mining, whilst government says it has done a lot to address the illegal mining menace. So this afternoon, we'll seek the resu to resurrect the conversation, or if you like, the campaign against illegal mining, or any form of mining which destroys our environment, especially our water bodies. We have brought together everyone who matters in this issue to find a way out of the situation. We have representatives of the media, Ghana Water Company, environmentalist government, and campaigners to deal with the destruction caused by legal mining activities. First though, here is a short feature showing the Galamsey problem in the Ashanti region. Meet Kweku Bwedi, a 52-year-old farmer at Manso Tontokrum, popularly referred to as Chinatown. It is a community in the Mansia South District of the Ashanti region. Bwedi has lived here all his life. <laughs> As the breadwinner of his family of two wives and seven children, Kweku switched from fishing as his livelihood to crop farming because the rivers in the community are too toxic to support any form of aquatic life. The river in which he undertook his fishing activity has almost dried up. The water looks brownish. The town, Manso Tuntukrum, Aswade, Manso Edubia, Manso and other communities are all now loosely referred to as Chinatown. With flooded open pits, Tuntukrum remains a dangerous mining enclave. Ekuya Fati is a mother of six and is worried about the safety of her children. Ikea is also worried about their inability to drink from the river. The Chinese enter these communities and effectively mining everywhere they can find the precious mineral. Unit Committee Chairman for the area, Peter Aure, recounts the difficulty in dealing with the problem. Uh, the situation is so dire that many farmland, including cocoa farms, have now been sold to the Chinese. 36 year old Jesse Amwenu now operates a Chinese owned gold processing machine in the community. As a Ghanaian, uh, I'm supposed to pay 30 cities or 40 cities for the day, depending on uh, how much I will get. But the Chinese man will buy an acre of land at 
2,500, uh, 20, uh, 25,000 or 30,000. Yeah, by, by an acre. But as for me, a Ghanaian, I can't get that sort of amount to uh, buy that land. Let me share with you how the river and cobra is looking like right now in the western region and just right there on your screen you will see that the river and cobra you cannot even identify how the color is looking because of the turbidity levels let me open it up for you so you can actually see how this is looking this is river and cobra for you if you can see there this is how it has turned this is supposed to be a river, but if you look at the color, you realize that a lot has happened there. Probably that's what the Ghana Water Company is talking about. All these areas, if you look at these areas, they're supposed to be forest areas, okay? These areas are supposed to be forest areas. I'm talking about these areas. They're supposed to be forest areas. But look at, because of activities of illegal mining, they've become... Um, pockets of muddy areas uh, there's no forest around this area and all of these are supposed to be protecting the river but now all these are gone and so the river and cobra has become very vulnerable and all the activities are affecting the river and that's the effect we're having right now having to ration water across the country i'm going to share some figures with you we've done a lot of operations operation halt um, operation what we've done a number of operations just to halt the activities of Galamse but that hasn't worked last year government launched a nationwide operation to clear illegal miners out of our water bodies now uh, some soldiers were there so this is it the personnel deployed for the this um, to go and check uh, Galamse we had for phase one we had 400 personnel deployed for phase two we had 200 personnel but what have we achieved from all these operations that governments have launched to ensure that we deal with Galamse? let's have a conversation this afternoon joining me via zoom for this conversation is george murray kuduka who is deputy lands and natural resources minister Kenna Shigbe is convener for the Media Coalition Against Illegal Mining. Daryl Bonso is deputy director of the Arocha Ghana. Stanley Marty is communications manager for the Ghana Water Company Limited. And also joining us this afternoon is Erastus Asari Donko, who is our correspondent in the Ashanti region. He's done a lot of work in Galamse areas. He will be sharing some insights which will serve as a guide at Edemstrom. Uh, who's also a documentary maker who has done so much in this field. I'm grateful, gentlemen, for making time for this conversation. I'll start with you, Stanley Marte, because you last week announced that it's become necessary to do rationing of water across the country. What exactly is our water situation? Hello, Stanley Marte. Can you unmute for me, Stanley Marte? Yeah, I shall thank you uh, very much. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to be part of this discussion. Um, the water situation currently in the country is not bad. It's not very bad. Um, it's said that if we do not work at rectifying the situation as it is now, uh, we may fall into a crisis situation. But currently, um, we are treating water. We are working producing around 60% capacity, uh, which is not enough uh, for the population though, but uh, we are managing the situation. And that is why we are doing the uh, water demand management, so that at least we can have some equitable distribution of the little water in the system, so that uh, uh, the population or citizens can survive on, 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 on the water that, that we have. So currently, uh, that is the situation. And uh, it is it's also arising uh, because of one, um, the, the dry season that we are in now. When you show the, uh, the map of the Ankoba, Ankoba area, you see how the forest uh, has been depleted. And you said it right by saying that the forest is supposed to give our river body some cover so that the rate of evaporation will be low. But currently, rate of evaporation is very high and we, we are challenged. Uh, as a result. Now, what makes it worse is that with little water in the system, 
um, our brothers who are uh, involved in Galamsu operations uh, have now started the activities in, uh, uh, in earnest. And so the little water is also uh, almost destroyed. The water is also highly uh, tepid now. So it becomes very difficult for us to abstract enough and to treat enough for the people. Now, when we abstract the little water, uh, because of the high turbidity, we have had to lose about 30 to 40 percent of what we have abstracted. So then, uh, the 60 percent, um, although not full capacity, is also not enough for um, for the population, and that is what we that's a challenge that we find ourselves now. Um, since it's a discussion, I need not say much. Let's listen to. Uh, and the other uh, 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 panelists, and let's see, uh, as experts in environmental food and all that, let's see the abuse, and then maybe we can, we can, we can, we can, we can add on. Uh, but currently, me... the situation, the mm. situation is not the best. We are just hoping that we are going to have um, um, early rains, and uh, so that at least um, uh, the river bodies can be replenished. With enough water and then the raw water quality can improve then we can absorb they can abstract uh, more water and to treat for the people but if the trend is to continue uh, then it's going to be a serious challenge mm. so we are really hoping for, uh, thank you let me bring in Adam Strem, who's also done a lot of work in the areas uh, of uh, mining areas. Adam Strem, I need you to paint a picture of what exactly you've seen in these areas as far as illegal mining is concerned. Okay, thank you very much, Aisha. Uh, so for now, I've been to the central region, western region, eastern region, western north and uh, a part of the northern region. Um, for me, filming uh, the destruction caused to rivers from two 2013, I've realized that since that time, nothing has been done and the situation is even worse. Um, if you take uh, the river Bonsa, for, for instance, which is in the western region, um, it joins the Ancobra River, and the 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 Ghana Water Company draws water from River Bonsa. And if you look at the picture of the, how the uh, the river, the color of the river has turned, you realize that it will be very difficult for the Ghana Water Company to treat the water because it is not only polluted by mud are also uh, polluted with cyanide, mercury, and other chemicals that the miners use. And because they do these things directly on the river, so it's certainly going to affect the production of water in that area, for instance. Now, if you come to uh, Dabwasi, where the Pra pass, you also realize that the, the Pra has uh, become like, as people say, it's become like a mellow drink you only need to add sugar to it. Hmm. So, um, and if you go to, uh, if you look at the River Tano, which uh, at a point divides Ghana and Ivory Coast or Côte d'Ivoire, you realize that it is also, um, the color has changed because of mining. And um, I think the picture on the screen right now is actually something that I did long ago. And uh, it shows how the Ancobra was neat, clear, clean, and clear. You could even see the 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 greens, the greens in the water itself. But when you look at the other side, you realize that it's completely gone. So um, this is how extensive or damaging the activities of illegal mining is causing to water bodies in Ghana. And look the. The one of the dangerous ones that we need to tackle immediately is the black water, which um, the Bui Dam is built on. Um, the miners have started approaching the river. They are mining by the river. Some are even mining on aspects of the river. So um, it's it's a very um, difficult situation, I must say, regarding the pollution of rivers in Ghana. Mm. 
Dr. Ashigbe, I, I, I remember you have warned severally that if we do not do things right, we are likely to reach a stage where we will have to import water. Is it where we are now? Well, uh, thank you very much, Aisha. And uh, uh, good, well, there's nothing good about the, the afternoon, but uh, we'll still agree good afternoon. Mm -hmm. And you see, so uh, uh, my brother Stalimati talks about the fact that we're in the dry season, you know, and so there's no water and all the challenge. But if you look at, if you examine the trends, and that's what Adam mentioned, if you look at take every dry season, you realize that the situation is getting worse and worse and worse. So if at this particular point in time, you are getting just 30% out of the raw water that you can treat, you know, you are, you, you are approaching the asymptote. You know, there was a time that I'm sure if you ask Stanley, they would be getting by this time in excess of, uh, you know, it will be flipped around. It might be just maybe 60% uh, that might, that, of that water that they would use. But now we are increasingly seeing that the, the dry seasons, the turbidity levels are getting worse and worse. The only reprieve that we got was, you know, during the, the height of uh, when uh, we started the media co uh, coalition against Galamse, and then you had the, uh, the joint force of the police and the military in there then you saw an improvement. But the way we are going, we are just pushing the limit. And definitely, it's a prophecy that Stanley made some time ago. And it's not a prophecy, it's just looking at the trends and saying that very soon we're going to start importing water. Because we are, water is, is, is a finite you know, item. And if you are, you are destroying the source of it, you know, the vegetative cover, at the source of the water, you are, you are destroying all of that. You will get to a point where all your water resources would run, run, would run out. And it's not only as if we're destroying that, but we're also poisoning the water as well. You know, so there's a lot of mining activity right on the, on the, on the water bed. Very recently, somewhere in Asagriwa, there was, you know, the excavators were on the river bed. There was one of uh, the people from there who then, you know, brought it to my attention. I raised it up with uh, the ministers. You know, some people went there, but they mined till the next morning and then they left, you know. So the Galamse is still going on. So the local authorities are able to help us deal with the situation that we find ourselves. Unfortunately, it looks as if we'll get to a point where you know, water, we might have to, uh, you know, import water. And it's not only about importing water. You know, there was a time where the minister, the former minister for environment went to Cote d'Ivoire on another assignment. They pulled him aside and, you know, the people in Cote d'Ivoire started chastising him that because of the unregulated mining that we're doing in our, our part, we were polluting their water. So what, if we are not careful, what would happen is that water would be the cause of conflict, you know, cross, uh, across uh, with our neighbors, you know. So it's the, the challenge that we talk about, it's really a serious one, but we don't seem to be treating it as we ought to do. We all have this ISO mentality to it. So we are cutting our thumbs to eat, thinking that we have, you know, some meats that we have. But we're destroying our today and our tomorrow. So I think it's very true, very, very soon, if we continue where our dry, our dry seasons are this bad, very soon there'll be no water. I mean, Dara Bonsu, you, you also have followed the discussion. I mean, government has done so many things. It seeks to uh, correct uh, the wrongs. Now, how would you describe our fight against Galamse? Have we made any progress? Thank you very much, Aisha. And I'll say that and to a certain extent, um, we, we, we decided to get on the right path to, to do right and deal with Galamse. But I'll say that along the way, the whole idea of government rebranding Galamse into commission mining made the matters worse. 
And that is how come all those areas that we saved as a result of the campaign against Galamsey, the community miners have gone back to these areas and they are moving forests, they are depleting rivers and streams. And that's how come we have this challenge. And if it continues like this, as it has been said, you realize that our current water provisioning system is not resilient in any way. There seems to be a focus on just the distribution of water services from the pipes and also from the distribution outlets. But until we have a system where we prioritize our watersheds, our rivers and streams, we are just wasting our time. And at the moment, the community mining, which is just another rebranding of Galante activities, has made matters worse. And I think that that has made it fail completely when it comes to addressing Galante. So there's still a lot more to do. But as long as our rivers continue to be polluted, every dry season, we are not winning the campaign. And that's something we need to deal with immediately and with as much agency as is needed. Well, I must say that the video showing on your screen right now is kind of see uh, Sarah Matrix and IRI. Uh, I'm now privileged to bring in the Deputy Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, uh, Mr. Mirikuduka. I'm grateful for your time. Recently, government has introduced several interventions, all in the bid to streamline the activities of illegal miners and bring some sanity to the sector. Where are we with that? That's Aisha. Uh, thanks for the opinion. Aisha, you know that just uh, recently we commissioned, I mean, we recommissioned the operation or two to embark on vigorous uh, exercise to weed out these recalcitrants who are mining in our river bodies. And that hasn't stopped in any way. As I speak with you, I, I may not be able to share technically the security uh, modus of radio on air but uh, they are on the field working. And with this canker, we may need all hands on deck. Government alone cannot fight it as we've been talking all, all these years, that it's not a measure to task a government to fight it unless it And if we don't realize that and we continue uh, politicking with you know, you know, mining in our river bodies, it will go a long way in disturbing this country. Um, for all you know, a uh, government after instituting the occupation for two, uh, has also instituted measures to have permanent security task force of these river bodies by getting river guards who will be supported uh, with speedboats on the river bodies, have security checkpoints, advantage points, where they will be reporting to these security checks uh, most uh, intermittently. So that we unleash whatever measures we could uh, do uh, to uh, arrest such this uh, situation. We recently, as your client, uh, did a national dialogue to bring everybody uh, on board, and uh, both minority and majority side of parliament participated immensely. So it, it tells you that we committed involving everybody, we've been making the small scale miners. Uh, cautioning them, conscientizing them, the need for them to uh, support government to fight this country. Interestingly, uh, Galamse fight has never been uh, an event. It's a process. Um, South Africa, uh, they call it Zama Zama. They were here recently to find out how we are even fighting our Galamse events. Interesting. And um, the turbidity level of our river is of concern to all of us. And uh, uh, we asking your platform to continue in, in any way um, sensitizing the public. They need to move away from our river board. The minister himself has even tabled that there are two zones, red zones, that he has declared and nobody whatsoever should mark these are uh, river bodies and that of forest reserves. And um, the onus is, not, is on all of us to practically campaign against mining our river bodies. And we'll continue to do that. Everybody must be on board. We shouldn't have situations where people will have that guts to say that when opportunity is given to me, I will allow you to mine. It emboldens those recalcitrants to continue uh, mining in, in, in our river bodies. It is not fair for us to do that. So I share, you know, the sentiments 
my brothers have shared already. It's something worrying, and we must all uh, be, be uh, you know, mindful of what we're doing and protect our heritage. We'll continue, we'll not throw our hands in despair, we'll continue uh, fighting this. I've been roaming around, getting to the field, making sure, even walking through the, some of the river bodies, and Cobra, Bonsa, as my brother mentioned, and other river bodies. There's the need. Practically, what we're also doing is to institute um, district mining committees who will be tasked to uh, run around and give us reports, everyday reports, as to how we're fighting, uh, they are fighting their respective uh, illegalities in the uh, rivers uh, of the various uh, districts. So uh, we're not leaving any chance. Uh, we're making sure that uh, we fight this canker. We're making sure that measures, practical measures are put in place to fight against this canker. We're also asking the media, especially your outfit, to also support what we are doing. And I appreciate what you are doing. Uh, just to say that some of the figures put out there uh, may be wrong because uh, this we are comparing 2016 and 2017 uh, the river uh, colors. But that is even not necessary as at this point to talk about. But I have the turbidity figures here with me. Just recently, we tasked the uh, Water Resource Commission to go around and get some samples of the turbidity. And comparably, we made some positives. But interestingly, people are taking advantage of the dry season to divert river course, to put um, earth moving machines on the uh, river bodies and mine, which is very sad. And that's why some uh, machines get bent or get demoralized. Uh, Commission, let me put it that way, the, when we meet them. Because this uh, people, legal miners, divert the river course, put the machines there, remove the control board as they call it. Then, when the military or the police leave, they refix and mine on the course of river. <laughs> that is worrying. So, you know, we must collectively come together as a country and say, we fighting this dispassionately, moving away from politics and to protect the interests of this country. It is very important. Mr. And Merkuduka, I, I quite remember in your first time when the president launched the campaign against um, illegal mining, uh, he enjoyed a lot of support from all angles. And I, I agree, I, I hope you agree that you failed in your first term to address uh, the uh, Galamse menace. Now, in your second term, you made a fresh promise. And one year on, here we are, our waters are already depleted. Now, people say you are only dressing the wound in the surface. You are not actually tackling the problems that will bring us the results. Will we ever see an uh end to this? I wouldn't uh, put it that the first effort the government failed. I wouldn't say so, as I've already told you, this is not an intent mm -hmm. that you can and go and say you succeeded, that's it. All over the world, countries that produce gold have been fighting this counter of balance. And you can get your heart. I mean, we are clear. Uh, I wouldn't say so. If we had not fought that battle, probably. Uh, we didn't have gotten to where we are. We, we might have even lost all our river body by, by now. Because the invasion of this illegality started in 2013, where people were you know, mining in Pazali and so on and so on. And the government had to come in with a ban on the, like, say, ban on mining generally, a small scale mining generally, to reposition the fight against this illegality. So I wouldn't say, say that the government failed uh, totally. Possibly. Uh, I, I wouldn't also admit that the government had 100%. No, there were gaps that we have repositioned ourselves to be really corrected. And as I've already mentioned, our plan, we have practically put in measures. It's not like just touting or saying anything to address or address or you know, just to say for political experience. No. There are practical measures we put in place. I've told you that government is now bringing in speedboats 
Now we will be manning around the river banks and river bodies of the country. We also uh, get in river guards who will be permanently patrolling the banks of our river, uh, you know, uh, river bodies. Uh, we also, apart from that, uh, still deepening the operations of Operation or 2 to, in a way, also patrol with both helicopters and other uh, equipment that may, uh, you know, in a way, support the operations. So we 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 leaving no stone unturned. It's not like uh, throwing our hands in despair and say we just speaking in any No, we are battling. Just recently, some foreign nationals were were arrested on one of the river bodies of which I led even the security task force. You know, to get them arrested. They are being prosecuted, some are, are, are you know, are being put behind bars, and we we still fighting it. And we need you continue doing some of these programs, which will, in a way, uh, put all of us on our legs, um, and also for people to understand the need for them not to mine in our river bodies. It is very key and very important uh, to the cause. Of this country. Mm. Dr. Ashigbe, let me bring you in. What's your assessment of governments in this fight? Uh, is that a political will? Well, um, Aisha, uh, thank you again. Um, you see, the, 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 the sweetness of the pudding is in the eating. Definitely. And the, in terms of what uh, the Honorable Deputy Minister is talking about, um, the uh, water guards, the um, the boats, speed boats that are coming. If you look as far back as the roadmap that was put together by government itself in returning to small scale uh, mining, a lot of these are in there. The problem has been the execution. The problem has been the execution. So you, you know, so we are going to get to the point where we were going to track all excavators who are going to even geofence them in terms of when they are imported into the country, you know, how we're going to register them and all of that. You know, you ask yourself what has happened to that. So you, uh, I, one of my colleagues was talking about um, the community mining. And for me, I thought the community mining was one of the great policies that we're going to come up with. But even when you take the, uh, the, uh, the community mining, there's no policy document currently that I have seen that is really governing that to say, this is how it ought to be done. And then you also, one of the major concerns we've had is the transparency involved in, in, in this particular exercise that we're doing so that you make it so open. I'm happy that the deputy minister talks about the fact that they've started commissioning, they are commissioning the water resource. It would be good for that data to be made available so that all of us can see it. And it's the, the Water Commission should be given the mandate to collect this data on a monthly basis. Because what you want to do is that you want to compare trends. So if you want to take the past five years, I want to look at every November, every November what has been the turbidity in a particular area. Those are the things that would actually be able to tell you whether you're making progress, what is the acceleration of the, you know, in terms of how the turbidity is changing. All of those things, you want to see them. In terms of involvement of the local authorities in the processes of giving licenses and all of that, you know, that's so many policies that have been put in place that are supposed to be working. But unfortunately, it, you know, we, we seem to be doing a bit, then we'll move back again, because the people on the ground are really not doing what they ought to do. You know, these excavators that we're talking about, they are not, micro, they are not mobile phones that you can put in your pocket. These are heavy equipment. How they get to cross all the police barriers and get into these places and are used on the river courses without anybody dealing with them. And you know, you have to get people call some of us in Accra and we would make calls to before you know these are being flashed up. I believe that the president had a very good opportunity to at the point where we're appointing DCs again to say that any DC who failed in uh, you know, uh, dealing with the scourge of Galam, say, we're not going to appoint you. And also for these particular DCs, some of them by now, we should be taking them out because it is either they are so incompetent, they cannot deal with the situation, 
or they themselves are complicit in it. We need to start holding them accountable. It should not take the, the, the Honorable Deputy Minister for leading tax forces into places that we have DCEs, we have uh, district police commanders um, and all of that to be able to police it. This thing has to be done from the bottom up. So yes, there are some things that we have done right. And I completely agree with the minister when he talks about the fact that if we had not really embarked on that particular fight, be it that we did not win all the battles that were in there, where we would have been today would definitely have been worse. But we should also not be happy with where we are, with this level of destruction that we are seeing and you know the way these challenges are staying us in the face. Note, there are some communities where there's a queen mother who's decided that Galamse is not going to happen in my community. Galamse is not happening there. We have some communities where you have some paramount chiefs close to those paramounties, big paramounties, there's Galamse happening in them. And, you know, so these paramount chiefs, them, they, as local authorities, they have completely lost the battle. So in as much as we want to see national government do work, we should start also holding our local authorities are chiefs in the committees that we are in also accountable because definitely if you look at the output of what we are having we're definitely increasingly the situation is becoming that and definitely we need all forces together to join hands to it to be able to win this i'm happy you talk about all forces and you are leading a very beautiful course the media campaign against galamse which i believe was actually helping in putting government on its toes what has become of that campaign Thank you very much, Aisha. Well, I think for us, the media, too, we, we also carry a bit of the, the challenge, but I'm not too sure we can be fully uh, blamed. I think what has happened is that we've, the media themselves, uh, they struggle, you know, in terms of you push and you push, and then the, the actions that, that ought to be taken are not taken. It's good that you have Erastos here. I remember going to the military high command when Erastos and Co. went in to go and point out some of the illegalities that were happening. What has happened to that? You know, there was a situation in, in which you find, you know, reports were made, that the media made reports, but in terms of those who have to take decisions, have not taken the decision. So it looks as if the media as well, we've not been as consistent, but I will not really blame the media. At least you brought it up again. I would I all just urge all of us that we all need to keep our eyes on the ball. One of the places that we have gotten to as media, and that requires a bit of support and a bit of funding, is to be able to do the investigative report, reporting. It's a very risky one. You know the challenge that Erastos went through where they were almost beaten up by you know, military authorities. Someone who went to the military high command really did not get much out of that. But that is the work that we need to do. We need to do and uncover the big wigs that are behind this. It's not you know, the, 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 the people who are in the, in, the, in the pits that you need to deal with. Who are the people who are importing these excavators into town? Who are the people who are renting them for over 20,000 cities a day? That's not small amount of money. We need to be able to unearth all of these people. And it's the reason why we would expect the state to collaborate with the media, especially the intelligence community to be able to flash out some of these people. I remember the very early stages of Honorable Peter Mill. You know, there was a national security report that was that, 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 that we got that, that you know, pointed fingers to some of these people, but that did not continue. And so Honorable Minister, those are the support that the media would require of you to be able to support them to go into the theater of, and because that's a theater of battle, a theater of a very dangerous place, to be able to give, provide them the cover to go into these places, the operation halls, where they are going, we should have media people embedded in there so that they can report the thing independently as it's going on. It is those things that would be able to show to, you know, citizens that we actually are serious about this and we need the buy-in of citizens to say that we need to stop this thing. So that's been the challenge with the, the media coalition. Remember that we were supported by Star Ghana and a few other corporate bodies and so when those funds also stopped, I can't blame the media. You know, you are, the media itself also was impacted very heavily by Operation Van, by, by COVID. So the resources to be able to continue at it has been difficult. But this is about survival. So I also urge you, the media, we need to de dedicate some resources behind this. And then when the media does its work as well, Honorable Deputy Minister, we need the support of the government 
the duty bearers to ensure that when we uncover some of these people, we actually punish them. And we also need a judiciary. The judiciary has also been one of the arms that have failed us. The situation where Operation Vanguard, you know, we had only 10% of the people that uh, were arrested being taken to court and even a smaller part being, uh, you know, uh, being uh, uh, convicted. And then you have the challenges that we had with, you know, big wigs like uh, Aisha Wang and all of that. All of those also said, you know, they become, uh, you know, uh, demotivating factors for journalists to want to put their lives on the line to continue this. But we cannot afford that because of these things, we will not really get into it and still push to, uh, to, to ensure that we can expose all those people who are really behind uh, these challenges that we face. Mm. Salimate, so how long are we going to endure this? Estalimate on. Kindly unmute for me, Stanley Mate. Yeah, Aisha. Yeah, let me let me be very sincere uh, with you and with my panelists and then uh, Ghanaians. Okay. Um, the way the situation is, we can't say that it will end tomorrow or the day after. Okay, because all our treatment plants or most of our treatment plants are conventional and we use surface water, not structured water. Now, if we continue to, if we continue polluting our river bodies the way we are doing now, then our equipment and our treatment plants will be there, but then there'll be no water to abstract for treatment. Now, we are just hoping for early rains this time around. If the rain do not come on time and the rivers dry up, it means that there'll be no water for treatment. And that is the seriousness of the issue. And that's what we've been talking about all the time. So we need to do everything possible to stop this pollu uh, the pollution of our river bodies. I hope you, I hope you, you get me because we are depending on the nat on natural resources. Now, if, for instance, rivers are, rivers are able to replenish themselves from either groundwater or from rainwater. Now, if, they are, if we do not have any rains, it means that they'll keep going down, okay? And then the little water that we have in the river bodies too are being destroyed by uh, um, uh, our colleagues in the uh, Galamse uh, arena. So then what happens to us? If the water gets tepid to a certain level, we can't even treat again, okay? So then if we do not, if we are unable to stop uh, the, uh, this thing, this uh, uh, pollution or this activity, this menace, that it means that we'll find ourselves uh, wanting in the very near future. We haven't seen rains the whole of this month. And we are not talking about rains within the cities, but we are talking about rains at the source where it can replenish our rivers and not rains in the cities that will wash our gutters into the sea. Now we also depend on the sea for treatment. I hope you're aware about that. And then what we are also facing now is also pollution of the sea itself. So that we are having challenge with our desalination plant because the water we abstract is filled with uh, 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 this thing, garbage especially our plastic bottles and our, um, the plastic bags that we, that we use on the market. So it's also affecting us in that arena. So we really need to do something about these things. And the earlier we did, the better. Um, Daryl, definitely uh, the earlier we did, the earlier, uh, I mean, the better, just like uh, uh, Stanley Mate is saying. But we've done enough to actually uh, ensure we don't get here, yet we are here. We've done Operation Halt, we've done Operation Vanguard, we've done uh, a task committee, uh, committee, task force, what have you, yet we are here. And Stanley Mate is saying something that is very dangerous. We do not know when this will end. It means that it can go from bad to worse. How do we get out of here? Yes, uh, thank you very much. I think we need to have a systematic approach to resolving this issue. First of all, we need to, we need to halt the actions of Operation Halt and give back the power to the district assemblies and the decentralized institutions that are there who are enabled to do their work. There's a police at every district. There's a traditional authorities. There are community people. All of these people need to be allowed to do their work without any political interference. And I think that is something we said somewhere in 2020 that if Operation Heart continues its activity beyond six months, then it means that we have completely failed. We need to, whilst dealing with this issue, 
give back the power to the communities when they report the police should act on them without any traditional or political interference. This is clearly missing. And until we do that, we are going to come back to this issue every year and it's going to keep the police and water. So secondly, at national level, we need to have a, a, a prioritization of our water resource management policy such that we make sure that mining activities stay clear of our water bodies. Yes, these are all inevitable. Mining is inevitable to livelihood for many people, but we need to make sure that it's done sustainably and it stays clear of, of our water bodies. Until we do that, we are going to have these challenges every year. And our current water system, like I said, is not resilient. We need to match the watershed protection with a water distribution system. Currently, we invest so much in water distribution, but very little in watershed protection. What is happening is not going to solve it. It is not the guard we leave at communities that is going to stop, stop this issue. We need to have a clear policy, stay clear of, of community resource management activities by making sure the politicians stay away, the traditional authorities respect the interests of the communities as well. Otherwise, we cannot keep funding the, the military on the ground all year round. It is not sustainable. Let's make our decentralized systems work, decentralized institutions work, Water Resource Commission, EPA, the police, and the community groups there to do their work. And then we'll be making progress. This is, is really unfortunate because it's happened every year and still we keep coming back to this. I, I, I believe that we, we want to make the next year we have clear targets to ensure that this doesn't happen. Otherwise, we can't come and sit here and say we have been very successful with the fight against Galamse. And in, in some instances, these military men we talk about, we've had complaints that some of them actually protect the people uh, who actually do the mining, the illegal mining, and deplete our environment. And um, Adam Srem, from the um, areas that you've been to, uh, were there indications that they were being protected by uh, some military men or some big men in court? Thank you. Um, yes, uh, as you rightly said, there are areas or places that you go and you find military men there that are protecting the the miners on the on the water on the water bodies. Um, a typical example was a, a section of the Ancobra River where um, I flew the drone and then I saw that there were some military guys there that are heavily protecting the miners. And that is also a point that you could count about. Um, about 25 or 30 uh, mining boats, as some of some people call it, others call it to, 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 on the on the Cobra River at the, at the same place. And this is, these guys are making um, huge money on, on the river. And uh, yeah, so the, the, the military, the police, these uh, Operation Hot guys, Another thing that they do is that it is not only about sucking the miners to go away from the water bodies. It is also an issue of extortion by some of these, um, some of these uh, Operation Heart members because I've been told by some of the miners that they come on their, on their site and they take about 20,000 CDs from them. And they say that they told me that they have prepared the money ready for them. So once they come, there is no talking. They hand over the money to them and they'll go their way. So it's, it's, it's a difficult situation. And as Daryl is saying, the best thing for us to do now is to cancel Operation Halt and find another alternative of solving the situation. For instance, if you have... Um, a, a, a water a river system that feeds almost half of the population of Accra. I'm talking about the Tiwa forest, for instance. And you have illegal miners who are being protected in that forest, destroying the Brim River, destroying the Desu River, destroying the Yesu River. Then you can imagine what will happen to, to water supply in, in Accra. Um, thankfully, Erastas has joined us because he shares the same experience uh, I mean, with the areas that he has visited and done a lot of reports from. Erastas, what's your experience? Share with us. Well, so um, it's not different from what Adam um, has been talking about. Um, 
we get the same indication. In fact, I came from Manso, uh, an environment, just about a week ago, and the uh, devastation is still ongoing. Even uh, close to Manso Dubia, just after the police barrier, by the roadside, uh, some young men are busily uh, digging even up to the road as we speak. When you go to the forest, to the Odaho forest, the areas where we went, where military men were protecting an individual there, uh, mining has still been ongoing for a very long time. Operation Halt has been to that area, but never visited the site. Uh, there have been uh, other mining within the forest reserve, Kobro, for example, in the Apamprama Forest Reserve. Mining is still ongoing there, very, very active. And if you look at the river Oda, the river of Fing, if you look at the river Nguyen, and the other stream in the area, there is no life in them. And you could see clearly that they are uh, polluted, hugely polluted. The foam and other things on the surface, uh, to, to a layman like me, will tell you that something is not right in there. And so um, you ask yourself whether the fight, as we got it, as renewed as it was, really was meant to achieve any success at all. Yes, we had all the successes talk where they drove uh, some of the miners from some of the river beds and other things, but they are back in their pool uh, squad and they are working. So that's the situation on the ground at the moment. Uh, Mr. Merkuduka, um, I, I believe you're listening to all the uh, experiences and, and the insights being shared. I mean, what's the uh, assurance from government and why should we believe you this time round? There is a clear operational manual that's a government policy on community mining. We also have Act 703 that ties us in the operation of small scale mining. I would be glad to collaborate with panelists uh, to share topics. Uh, and that I would want you to also make a comment that this was launched uh, in November. So, this is to guide the operations of community mining. So, there's a clear policy outline for the operations of community mining. And notwithstanding that, um, let me put it also on record that the solution to this canker is for all Ghanaians to appreciate the fact that there is a need for us to protect our rivers. Um, we have a situational room. The ministry is also ready to receive whoever is ready to work with us. And what my brothers have shared to collaborate effectively to fight this cancer. This situational room receives all reports, then it, these reports are taken to the appropriate quarters in the security forces to embark on any uh, activities that need to uh, uh, be done. Uh, with the aspect of river and cobra uh, being mined by by those recalcitrants who are being protected by military, I'll be glad to get a coordinate of this area and we'll go fight these people, get them off and arrested and prosecuted in Ukraine. Because nobody will allow or sanction that military people, and I don't think the military will face that you know, force or will be ready to in a way, mingle in that illegality. Though people put on military uh, kind of uh, attack, you know, though they are not professional, just to, in a way, deceive the public that they are military who have been tasked or assigned to do such operation. So uh, the military themselves or the, uh, the home security architecture will be interested to know where these people are to get them arrested. We'll be happy to, to, to do that. And let me say that, yes, uh, we're not saying we are the uh, champions of the uh, whole fight. And I wouldn't say anywhere to praise myself. 
what we are saying is that as Ghanaians, we need to protect whatever we have. We need to protect our natural resource. We need to protect our river bodies. We need to protect our forest reserves. And it is important for all of us to come together. For example, this operational manual was deduced out of the national dialogue that we did, where we did it you know, collaboratively with other political parties and all Ghanaians. So the matter is not about someone sitting somewhere and saying, do it and let's see. And that is why I'm welcoming all views and all ideas. But we've gone a long way in securing the river bodies. Otherwise, the situation would have been dire. Um, we'll continue fighting. The measures we are putting in place, we believe the tracking, and one of uh, the panel members raised that, that where have you got into the respect of tracking the earth moving machines, uh, you know, to uh, kind of also help the minerals commission to deactivate if the machine goes outside the confines of the assigned concession. And that we're doing very soon, uh, we'll get it you know, operational. Um, we've selected few uh, technical guys who have uh, technical work without, as far as tracking of these earth moving machines are concerned. The Minerals Commission is ready to uh, get it operational soon. We'll let you know so that you also get it out there for us. And we want each and every earth moving machine attacked so that uh, we can, in a way, manage and these machines wouldn't be moved uh, on the river bodies uh, as we see uh, now. Uh, secondly, what we also, you know, doing, as I've already mentioned, is to also have permanent river guards who will be patrolling 24-7. Sometimes this uh, operation holds to, they go around, they come, they, they, the people are aware that they don't operate at night. So uh, after leaving possibly around six o'clock, uh, midnight or 11 o'clock, 11 p.m., they get back, get the uh, machines ready, and they start mining at night. And we want to really, uh, we are mindful of that and we are going to protect you know, or work on, on, on that aspect as well. So the river guards... I would with, urge you to keep on fighting. With your campaign, yeah. with your campaign we will make it happen. Mm, so keep on fighting, but have it at the back of your mind that water is currently being rationed. And the Ghana Water Company Limited says that the earlier we do something about our situation, the better. And failure to do so, your guess is as good as mine. I'm grateful, gentlemen, for your time. George Murikuduka is Deputy Lands and Natural Resources Minister. Dr. Ken Ashivi is convener for Media Coalition Against Illegal Mining. Daryl Bonso is Deputy Director at Arocha Ghana. Stanley Mate, Communications Manager for Ghana Water Company Limited. Uh, Adam Shrem is a documentary maker. Uh, he makes documentary around these areas and Erasta Sasari Donko is our own correspondent in Ashanti region.